Hey there, welcome to my channel. I'm Kira. I'm so excited to have you here today. If you are new, please subscribe and click the bell for notifications. Also give a like to this video. A lot of stuff been going on. What are some of the things that you've been dealing with or that you need prayer for? Make sure you just drop me a comment and I'd be glad to respond to you. It definitely seems like there's tons of arguing, quarreling, and disagreeing going on in the world we're living in today. I've been hearing so much, you know, everyone has a different opinion. People just get so offensive and frustrated and angry at each other. And I really looked at what the Bible had to say about disagreements and where God God's heart is. I know God is not a God of discord or strife. And so I looked up some verses about this because when Jesus was actually told that he was doing things wrong, even though he was healing people and just preaching the gospel, people became very angry at him, even religious people. When he actually was accused falsely and they beat him and tortured him, he didn't say much and he remained silent. Out of all the things he could have said and done to prove himself as the son of God, he remained silent and he knew that he had a job to do. Those of us who accept him as our Lord and Savior and dedicate our lives to him could live in heaven in eternity with God. Sometimes it doesn't matter what you say to people. I'm sure you have people in your own life like this. You could speak the truth all you want, but the truth isn't what people want to hear. Sometimes it just does not matter what you say. Sometimes it's better to just keep the peace and to let them have the last word because God doesn't want us to continue in a state of strife and arguing. Have you ever noticed how worked up you get when there's arguing going on? Your heart rate goes up, you get flushed, or you get, you know, your blood pressure rises, so you get either red in the face or you just want to leave because arguing makes you feel very uncomfortable, it's because God does not want us to be in that environment. He does not wish for us to be in stressful situations. How do we deal with these situations when they come? Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you while you only need to keep silent and remain calm. It's hard to sometimes feel like the Lord is fighting for us when we don't see anything happening. That's when we really need to pray because us and our silence and our stillness, it brings us peace. And peace is where God operates. Peace is where God just moves and heals. And sometimes we need that time. 2 Timothy 2, 23 through 25 says, But have nothing to do with foolish and ignorant speculations, useless disputes over unedifying or stupid controversies, since you know that they produce only strife and give birth to quarrels. The servant of the Lord must not participate in quarrels, but must be kind to everyone, even tempered, preserving peace, and he must be skilled in teaching, patient, and tolerant when wronged. He must correct those who are in opposition with courtesy and gentleness in hope that God may grant that they will repent and be led to the knowledge of truth, accurately understanding and welcoming it. And then even in verse 26, it says, And that they may come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. The devil loves to make people fight. He loves to cause quarrels and disputes. He thrives on it. He laughs at it. He laughs at people when they do it. Because God is a God of unity, not division. And the devil knows exactly what will cause division amongst people. He watches us. He watches our movements. He doesn't know our thoughts, but he knows our body language. He knows what words we've said in the past and how we've responded. And so he tries to stir up strife and frequently does it because he knows exactly how to do it. And he'll put thoughts in our mind. And if we entertain those thoughts and take them and act upon them, we're doing exactly what he wants us to do. When we do dispute, we need to dispute the things that tear down the knowledge of God and teach people what God says, where his heart is, and what he wants us to do in these situations. 2 Corinthians 3 through 4 says, We are human, but we do not wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. God's weapons are the Bible and the revelation of his truth in the Bible. We use his word to show what is true. For those who don't believe that the Bible is the absolute truth, those of us who do, we have to pray and ask God to help people understand and to reveal the truth to them. And some people choose to never believe because they have a free will. And God knows that some will never choose him and that some will always argue what the Bible says and will always argue followers of Jesus and disciples of Jesus because 
because they refuse to listen. How do you have a conversation with someone who refuses to listen to what you have to say? You don't. Philippians 2, 14 through 17 says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as the children of God, shining like bright lights in the world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. And then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I did not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless but I rejoice even if I lose my life pouring it out like a liquid offering to God just like your faithful service is an offering to God and I want all of you to share that joy so first he's saying do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you people will criticize you but before the eyes of God you're clean it says live clean lives innocent before the Lord shining like bright lights full of people who are living in worldly ways it says hold firmly to the word of life that's the bible hold firmly to it and one day jesus christ is going to return to earth and he is going to see those who truly follow him and love him and he will be proud that they ran the race of life and reached the finish line paul says but i will rejoice even if i lose my life pouring it out like an offering before the lord it doesn't make sense to a lot of people how sacrificing your life and living it before the lord is a blessing. I can't really put it into words. That's something that so many people have had an opportunity to fight and argue and protest. Maybe they lived in a country where being a believer in Jesus is illegal. And instead of arguing their case before people, they allowed God to move. And maybe they were martyred for the sake of their belief in Jesus. This still happens. People still die for the sake of following Jesus. But that's what it is to be sold out to Jesus and to live a life that God approves of. And I encourage you to seek wisdom. If you don't know how to deal with someone who always wants to fight and argue, how to deal with difficult situations with people, I encourage you to spend time with the Lord and read the word. Ask him what he thinks and how he wants you to handle the situation. He wants you to glorify him. He doesn't want you to be trampled on and he doesn't want you to to trample other people. He doesn't want you to sin in your anger by letting your anger control you and take over. You end up saying or doing something that you wish you didn't do. I pray that you can find encouragement because this is a hard topic. I don't have all the right answers. I'm definitely not perfect in this area, but I know it's something that so many of us struggle with. And I just wanted to share some of those verses with you because I wanted to encourage you to be looking in the word of God and seeking answers and wisdom on how to deal with these difficult situations when they happen. We don't want to be the ones who start a fight. We need to come confidently and with wisdom and state things. It's okay to tell someone I'm not going to discuss this until you can be calm about it. Thank you so much for watching today. Again, leave me a comment. Let me know some ways that the Lord has been helping you through a lot of the difficult situations that you've maybe been experiencing. Also, don't forget to share this video, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications, and give a like to this video. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to be blessed and stay joyful.